the Thoughty or Tea podcast. I mean, days I wake up and I think, yo, you're so fat. And I know I'm not. Because, you know, in a year I've lost like four stone. It's like, <laughs> these are how these things affect us, you know. Yeah. But I still feel it's like the self image, doing what self esteem. I'm doing. Yeah. And this is why I thought, I'm going to give you everything today. And I thought that I'm really going to take this opportunity to to touch, to talk, to, you know, be an advocate, because if if, if other people can do it, and I feel like I've been for a lot, then I want to be able to shed light on people. I mean, that's what I live for, you know. I don't, I don't live for me. I live for people. And I think if I didn't so, have so my mom... Greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I didn't have my mum, I don't think I'd be here full stop, to be honest. But there, there is an aspect of mental health which I think is very, very underrepresented, up, underrepresented, which is things about your about your body, body image, and self esteem. Like we're we're living in a time where there's a lot of standards out there. A lot of, you know, we we talk a lot about how social media can really warp. The perceptions of women but i think it's also for men as well i grew I we up see hating my body instagram people out you know out yeah. in the world taking steroids and mm, saying that they probably. can just achieve this through hard work and that you're weak and that you can't do all of this and you know if you're if you don't have a particular body type then yeah. you're not um re- a real man or you're not attractive you know i think up. everyone experiences that yeah body image issue these days 100 percent. i was growing up and i i I, you know i didn't feel like i found my style until a certain age and i'd see people that were wearing this particular thing and i'd be like i always had this like vision of i want to be that person and now i just i just i don't want to be that person Mm -hmm. you know my outfits speak for themselves sort of things and it's them things that we we learn you know that how do I how do I how do I reword that like you kind of you, you look at people and you want to like emulate yeah, them yeah like you wanna, I think you want to get how where they are yeah but to the point where it's it's not like that anymore because the creative person inside me is like hmm. I really don't know how to touch on that or, or, or he or how to even you know explain what it is I'm trying to say so like something around like individuality, right? Mm, yeah, and self-expression. Not feeling, you know, you know, not feeling comfortable in you know your body image. I mean, like, I, I, you know, I said I'm, I'm struggling a lot with eating, and you know, for me, mm. if I eat something, I'm trying not to exercise straight away and stuff like that because you know that's the thingy of like. If you do that, you're going to become this or you're going to look a certain way. And in terms of like appearance, you see how it swaps. You see how that when I was younger, it used to be like, I wish I was, you know, I wish I could express myself through my fashion this way, like that person is. Where now it's like kind of just swapped. And it's kind of like, Mm -hmm. you know, about what, what I just said in regards to the I think it was was it was it the eating yeah yeah I um, um throughout my life I've always had issues with my own body image self-esteem I, I I used to try and the reason why I kind of was so adamant on getting a certain body type and getting like a level of leanness and dropping my weight down was because I really struggled with like the fact that I, I wasn't very good at talking to girls and that I couldn't, you know, I really wanted a relationship and I was like, oh, well, but, well people don't find me attractive and that I, I'm just so socially awkward and I can't speak to people. So what do I do? Well, you know, I try and fix external things. I try and, you know, <laughs> I try and work on getting lean and getting strong and, you know, and I, I think that that, for me was a big ignition for my own sort of eating disorder habits it was also i think it wasn't necessarily about my body image as well it was more like 
it was like another way of sort yeah, of harming way. myself. Something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah 100%. That, I was bulimic, so it was kind of, you know, there's that purging aspect to it, which is, it's it's somewhat dramatic just by its nature. And I, I kind of felt like I deserved it at that time, that I, I wasn't good as... You know, I didn't deserve to have that that meal or that food or that those sweets, so I kind of punish myself. Yeah, we do by not eating, and yeah, I don't think I've we're at completely two different. I've felt like I'm. I've only just started to acknowledge that it's a problem, and I think for anyone that struggles or has struggled with an eating disorder. I don't know how to say this. There's only so much we're ready to open up about, you know, at a time. And that's sure. So it's kind of nice to hear your outlook and how it affected you because mm -hmm. I'm not that. I'm okay to say, look, I've got an issue with really, eating, but. There's there's a lot no, more, you know. It yeah, comes I, with time, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does, and I really love hearing. No, I don't love hearing you say this, but I like. No, to I, hear know, that. Yeah, I love hearing you say this. <laughs> I really like. To, I love that, talking uh, about all these horrible things. Oh yeah, I'm so just, glad that you've had. <laughs> yeah, I just it's it's nice to I think for anyone that's you know struggled with eating and they hear about it from someone else, it's easier to talk about. It's easier to be like, okay, there's a problem, but there's only so much I want to address. Like, I'm not, I'm not ready to get help sure. for my sure. eating disorder and stuff. No, 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 no it's, pressure. To, yeah, no, you know, that. it's 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 them sort of things, and so I really like hearing that you've. It's inspiring, man. It really is inspiring, and I yeah, think as as well, we we do have a tendency, like as as men, to to glorify. Unha unhealthy states like you know some of the the top like bodybuilding creators they're like you know obviously great great physique lots of muscle but you know they're chronically underweight they're chronically mm. like and and the reason why people go to follow them is because they are like that we yeah, have that aspect of big orexia and body dysmorphia kind of going around where men don't feel manly enough because they don't Look as muscular yeah. as they want to, when mm -hmm. they look at themselves in the mirror and they're like, "Oh, well, how tiny am I?" Am I? And I think that, that that's that's another aspect of it. And I think a lot of men, you know, they feel they feel a lot of, I guess, they they they, they feel weak from yeah. not looking a certain way. And we we tend to glorify those people who use things like steroids and. Yeah, yeah. Cut their weight down, and so there's that aspect. Well, of it's things. just normalizing things that just shouldn't be normalized, man. And I think I just I see it in so many areas, and not just in this. And it, I just hate that, man. That 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 things are often this way because there's a lack of support in it. And not enough people talking about the stuff that people should be talking about and highlighting. Yeah. And I, I, I think there is the big stigma around eating disorders and men just in general. Yeah, like 100%, most of the 100%. representation is is focused towards women. Not not enough towards men, even even though you know it's it's clear that we do experience it. Yeah, exactly. And I'd probably even say that there's more stigma around that eating disorder sort of space than with mental health yeah 100 percent. yeah mm -hmm. you know a lot of the manly men online might go oh just bloody get some food in here and yeah. eat right and do all uh, these yeah, stuff yeah and yeah stop eating loads of crap on the night yeah. like <laughs> do you know there is one well that's guy easy that for I you like. to say because you don't have an eating disorder <laughs> there is one guy i like um he's a tiktoker it's the irish guy and he oh, yeah. doesn't care for his appearance. He doesn't whack off his top and go, yo, look at these abs. He's got his top on and he's not talking about, you know, 
all of the negatives and it's talking about you know mm. it, it, you know this is how much you actually need to eat if you want to gain even a pound of fat you know like don't be beating yourself up over and it, it's them kind of people that i think we need more of the people that aren't just do you know do you know what i mean but i have seen since mm. i really wish i had the, the guy's name what's the guy's name I'll send him to you, but he's an Irish guy and he does, he does like his workouts, but he doesn't record like all of that stuff. It's not just that stuff, but you see like there's so mm. many people that are just normalizing that, yo, if you want to get this way, like we're training, you don't, you can't eat that. You can't, you can't drink that. You can't, you know, you have to get this much sleep. That really feeds into it as well. Yeah. When you're yeah. For an eating disorder, like yeah. these are bad foods. <laughs> yeah yeah these are bad foods eat these it's ones like, you know for life and i, I already get fat know and... <laughs> like you're telling someone like i don't know the calories to like almost every single thing i eat like you know and i think yeah i think that that online stuff just really doesn't help either so it's nice mm. that there, there are there are things like this like podcasts like this online that are are, are positive in in you know making people aware i think it's it's interesting because with, with any disorder any condition any neurodiversity people already have kind of assumptions about what you'll be like and who you'll be and like i, I the the thing is is that I've, I've gone through a lot of this stuff and i still struggle with a lot of things and i have my family supporting me with certain things but at the same time i am doing my podcast i am doing my online stuff i am making a business i do go to the gym i used to be a combat athlete you know i used to fight people in a full contact sport you know it's not it's just because i'm open about how i am and what what struggles that i've had it doesn't automatically remove me from being yeah, able to be yeah. a strong person and a successful person it's just Exactly. That stuff and that stuff. It's not this yeah, it's that. whole categorization of who I am as a person. It's those experiences that enhance our ability and, you know, the ability to be more powerful. And so I think, yeah, we just need to recognize this stuff more, way more than it is. 